it's time for fun. Hello. Meg isn't here yet because she is trying out for a new sports team. I have so many questions for her when she gets here like, what sport is it? What's the team called? What's training like? She have any friends on her team? And I really want to know about her coach. Have you ever played any sports? Nice. I know I love playing sports. Ooh, let's try and play some right now. How about basketball? Can you make your hands into a hoop like this? And I'll try to throw a basketball in. Ready? Go. She shoots, she scores. Okay, it's your turn to grab your imaginary ball and shoot it into my hoop. Ready? Shoot. Swish, right in the basket. Well done. What about baseball? Now, baseball has a bat and a ball. Can you hold your bat like this? And when the ball comes, you swing it. How about you try and throw me the ball first? I've got my bat ready. Can you throw it? Three, two, one, throw. Swing and a hit. Now, okay, let's see. It's your turn to bat. Can you hold it like this? Good job. And we're gonna, when I throw the ball, you're gonna swing like this. Ready? One, two, three, swing! Oh, what a big hit! Oh, now maybe we'll stretch our legs and do a few star jumps before Meg gets here. Great star jumps, and look, Meg's here! Hello, so good to see you today. Meg, I can't wait to hear about your new sports team. I have so many questions like, what sport is it? And what's the team called? And what's training like? And do you have any friends on your team? And oh, tell me about the coach. <laughs> wow, you sure do have a lot of questions. I was going to join a sailing crew. Did you know that a team of sailors on a boat is called a crew? But I don't think I will join the crew. What? You said you were so excited to join a new team. Crew. Yes, I was excited, but I've never been in a crew before. What? I thought you were a sailor and had done lots of sailing races. I am, and I have. But in sailing, it was just me and my boat. Out on the open water, it's such a wonderful sport. Sometimes, I race in my boat against other people in their boats. I've never been on a boat with other crewmates before. But wouldn't it be fun to have friends to do a sport with? I don't know. When you sail in a crew, you have to work together and listen to each other and listen to the coach. My dad taught me to sail, so I've never had a coach before. <gasps> did you get to meet the coach today? Yep, sure did. She seemed like a really great coach, but everything is so different. She said the most important thing to do is to put your crewmates first. I'm used to only looking out for me. I don't know what it's like to put a crewmate first. It's just going to be too different. I don't think I can do it. Oh, Meg, I think you would make a great teammate. Crewmate. Yes, crewmate. It's kind of like how we work together to do the cubby house. Yesterday, I asked you to think of what song to sing for music time with Meg. Do you remember what you told me about how you picked a song? Yep. You told me that we were going to be talking about how to live for God and how that would look different to living our lives just for ourselves. So I found a song that I think our friend would love to sing that would help them learn about living for God. And what happened when you came across a good song? Well, I found a great song, but it's one that's a bit tricky for me because it has whistling in it and I can't whistle. So it was a good song for our friends, but a hard song for you. Yep, I think so. See, that's what it's like working on a team or crew and putting others first. I also have a great lesson from the Bible on putting God first, others second, and ourselves last. But first, I would love to hear the song you picked. Could you sing it for us? I would love to sing our song together. How about we head out into the garden to sing now and then grab our Bibles and come back to hear Megan's Bible story. Excellent.
music time with Meg, everyone. All my friends are here in the garden, so why don't you jump up on your feet and sing with us? Every day there are choices what to say and what to do. I will pray, you will help me do what's right when it's hard. I know that you love me, no matter what I do, and every day you show me the way to live for you, ooh, 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 live for you. choices what to say and what to do I will pray you will help me do what's right when it's hard I know that you love me no matter what I do every day you show me the way to live for you Meg for choosing such a great song for us to sing today. And thank you for reminding me that I do know how to put others first. I'm still a little bit worried about joining that sailing crew though. I still don't know if I'll be able to learn from a coach or work with a crew. It just, it seems too different and too hard. Well, you have joined a team before, although I wouldn't call it a team really. Call the crew and no, I haven't joined a crew before. Well, well what about being on Jesus's team or better yet, Jesus's crew? Jesus doesn't have a team or a crew. He wasn't a fisherman. His disciples were. No, but he did call his disciples to be on his team. And he was a very different coach, teaching people to live in a different way. We read about it in Matthew chapter four. First, Jesus calls 12 men to join him. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Are they the 12 disciples? Yes, they were like his core team or crew. They were who he was going to teach or coach to live. But they already knew how to live. I mean, they were alive, weren't they? They'd lived quite a few years without Jesus already. Yes, but Jesus was going to coach them on how to live for God. You know how we talked about Jesus being king? Yep. Well, Jesus was going to teach them how to live in his kingdom under his rule. Kind of like how God's our father and Jesus teaches us to be his children and family together. Exactly. There are lots of different examples we could use, but we'll say God is making a new team in his new world and Jesus is the coach and is going to teach them how to live for God. I get what you're saying, but I'm not sure what that means for me. Well, one of the best places to look for how Jesus taught or coached people to live for God is the Sermon on the Mount. This starts in the next chapter, Matthew chapter five. After had Jesus had called his core team or crew or crew of disciples, he began teaching and preaching and healing people in different towns. Then a large group gathered around them and Jesus went up onto a mountainside. Can you pat your legs and make them walking up a mountainside? Jesus walking up a mountainside. Whew. On the mountainside, he began to teach to the disciples and the crowd. Many of these people would have heard teachings in synagogues and from other religious leaders about how to live according to the Ten Commandments that God gave Israel. But the way Jesus teaches them to live is very different from how most people would be living their lives and very different from how the world tells us to live our lives now. The world says you can do everything on your own, but Jesus said, blessed are those who know they need a savior. 
the world says you have to be strong. But Jesus said, blessed are those that are weak and know that God is strong. The world says you've got to get as much money and power as possible. But Jesus says to be generous and gentle to others. So Jesus was saying, if you're going to be in his crew, you're going to have to do things differently. Exactly. And Jesus was saying something very similar to your coach. What's that? Jesus was teaching people that to be a part of his new crew and new kingdom, they would need to put God first, others second, and themselves last. That's like what the Jewish teacher asked Jesus what the most important commandment was. Yes. And what did Jesus say? Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second commandment is like the first. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Great memory verse, Meg. You see, you have already joined a new crew when you decided to follow Jesus. And you have had a coach as you have read and listened to Jesus' teaching in the Bible. And I have worked with a crew as I've worked and served with other Christians like we do here in the Cubby House. Yep. I know this sailing team is going to be different and probably a bit challenging and hard, but living our lives for God is different and sometimes challenging, but it's the best way to live and we find great joy in living for God. Do you think I'll find joy in being part of the new sailing crew? I sure do. And I think we could keep looking at what Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount to help you learn about how to live for God and how to be a good teammate. Crewmate. Oh, I'll get it one of these days. I, I still don't know any of my crewmates. Maybe you could think of something special to invite them to do with you. That's how we got to know all of our new friends at the Cubby House. Yes, I do love spending time with you in this Cubby House. But it's probably time for me to think of something fun to do with my new crewmates. Oh wait, first we wanted to know what your team, sorry, crew is called. Oh well, the sailing crew is just called the crew, but we do have a boat name. <gasps> What's the boat called? The boat is called Awaken. So I will be joining the crew of Awaken. That is a pretty cool boat name. I'm glad we asked before we said goodbye. I have to run now too, but we will see you next week in the Cubby House. Bye! In the Cubby House, it's time for fun.